This is the Broadwood Barless Grand Piano made in about 1912, five foot eight inches long. We're always very grateful when we get one of these in. As barless means that it doesn't have any struts going from front to back here. Um, it's a well-known and well-respected, uh, probably the best Broadwood Grand Piano I think that you can get. So most grand pianos have struts going from front to back, but Broadwood seem to be able to design one that's extremely stable and doesn't have those. Now before we look at the mechanics of the piano and the sound, I just want to look at the case. It's 88 key. It has been replaced. These ivories have been replaced. That these days is a good thing because very often uh, there's lots of restrictions on ivories, especially if we export. Um, this is typical Broadwood with the black here and this folds down twice like this, a double fold. Um, that's standard Broadwood and uh, a good idea because it means it's completely flat here so you can't catch your fingers at all. It's not that essential obviously but something that Broadwood decided to do and they've got many ideas that are uh, really well thought out. Beautiful music stand as well and I don't think there's any real defects on the piano. It's been repolished. It was restored before we got the piano. Looking at the top of the piano, it, that's no fade line. Uh, it's all looking excellent. There's this rim round the side. That was original black rim round the side. And uh, that's you find that in a lot of Blutner Grand Pianos as well. So looking around the back, really no defects. Beautiful rosewood. I'm pretty sure it's rosewood. Um, confusion between rosewood and mahogany sometimes but I'm normally there were rosewood at that period of time and then became mahogany later on if we look at the stringing here it looks absolutely perfect and um, so an excellent job's been done restoring the piano if you're tall then this has got plenty of legroom 62.5 about one centimeters more legroom than most and pedals extremely low at 5.2 centimeters from the floor so normal will be seven centimeters so there's plenty of room to add some caster cups if you want to this is great leg style so you'd have to have six caster cups so these are new strings and i've got some new tuning pins so they're very tight I've checked them it's really important that they're tight oversized pins this is a standard st size lever it fits per perfectly well on this so you could have a large star here and um, maybe fit slightly better I'm very comfortable tuning with this you need to check at the very bottom if you've got restrung um, repin very often they're absolute maximum size these aren't they're all the same size so that's good Broadwood always did put this little felt here quite a nice touch not many manufacturers do it like that most of them don't have a little felt here it just looks it makes it look very tidy and you can see the new hammers there we'll look at those in a minute new dampers obviously and the dampers lift off beautifully now the reason I we like broadwoods I've always found tuning them that and this is so, they're so rich around this area here this barless broadwood somehow the constructions made it more even it's just a rich tenor area for the size of the piano and of course with new hammers bring out the tone beautifully and no bar here we talked about that with nice uprights uh, though there is a gap here and I think that's because it, it was necessary for the action ma uh, to be made um, in the way the actions made there needs to be a gap here but they, there's no bar on uh, going over the bridge there's nothing uh, to interrupt the bridge at all so if you look at most grand pianos and uh, most uprights apart from night we mentioned um, there, there's, there's a gap there's a different the gap there between the strings that side and the strings the other side and that does mean a tonal difference sometimes there's a beautifully rich and sonorous singing area around here and an excellent break point Looking at the action, it's got new key bushings here, and the hammers, uh, arbol hammers, and very, very little wear on them, really. Um, I notice here that one or two of the hinges are a little bit loose, and so that's something we've got to do. So a little bit of repinning, um, well, not very much, but just a little. So they obviously don't need all repinning, um, just a few of them that are slightly loose. There's one, so it's very slight, but um, uh, and there's one here. They've replaced this one here, and when I try the swing test on it. So if I lift them all up, you notice the one that is a bit slower here. So that needs to be lubricated. Not much to do really. This needs lubricating here, the balance rail. We do that with talc, dry lubricant. 
Now these are Arbel German hammers and I noticed a date here, I think that's the 6th of the 2nd 2004. So that suggests that that's when it was reconditioned or when it was restored. So looking at the assessment sheet I put on the history here restored 2004 stroke 2016 because the hammer suggests that the main work was done and I think the colour of the string suggests that 2004 when the main work was done but the client bought it from a shop reconditioned in 2016 so that's probably what's happened there and we need to reweigh the action I didn't mention this but the weight of the is quite heavy so 65 grams for the that base C is really to, should be 55 maximum um, 52, 50, 47 to 52 really, uh, something we'll have to do and uh, sharp there that's 65 so generally you can see in the 60s, 50s a little bit lighter in the treble which it should be anyway but 55 that should be really 50 I think so um, we need to even that out and lubrication of the balance rail will help and uh, lubrication of the roller too and we'll see what else we can do before we actually have to add lead weights to the keys uh, which we may have to do. So let's just compare the tone a bit with some other pianos. This is a this is a fully restored Grotian 1926. This is a uh, 160 centimeters long. And this is a new Foric 179. So that's a Broadwood Barless Grand Piano made in about 1912 and the 5 foot 8 inches long. That's 172 centimetres. It's always a privilege to get one of these in. They're so well made. Around the here they have such a full tone. You might have noticed it's a, smooth, it's a softer, mellower sound than the other pianos. That's partly to do with hammers but also to do with the construction of the piano. Normally modern pianos, well the, the Grotrian isn't, wasn't a modern piano but it's restored in a modern way so this one is the most mellow of the lot. So such a full tone round then you feel like really playing into it. We haven't tuned the piano since it came in, so that's a testimony to the fact that it is very, very stable. It's slightly flat, but not very much, and that's obviously because it's not been played for a, or tuned for a while. And you get a good contrast in volume as well. I generally don't play very loud on the videos because it tends to distort a bit with the microphone I'm using. good contrast on the unaccorda pedal as well. That's played with the same strength, just a different part of the hammer hitting the string.
So I can assure you if you buy this piano you'll be really happy with it. We've got to sort the touch out. That really is too heavy, but it's something we're, we're, we're very familiar with doing. It's so common that we have, find we have to do that. If you like a heavy touch, then let us know, but not as heavy as this probably. Um, if you like a light touch, we can achieve that as well. So uh, anything's achievable. Obviously, it's quite a lot of work doing that, but um, we're used to it and uh, something we, we enjoy doing. Thank you very much for listening. And if you're interested in the piano, please do write to us, info at robertspianos.com. Thank you.